Well, 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 Mr. Stinking Cox here, and this is my lovely wife, and uh, she is going to watch this particular presentation, and if she has questions, it might be the same questions that you would have, and so she'll just ask them. Um, if you do have any questions, the best way to reach me will be through Schoology messages, um, but you also could email me at rccox at auburnschools.org. That's rccox at auburnschools.org. So here's the thing. Today, Karen, we will be learning about um, how to sell a product using a picture and, um, you know, a few words, of course, on there. Um, this is not really a how to do a Photoshop technique. It's just how to relate psychologically to the uh, target audience that we're trying to sell to. Does this make sense? Yes. All right. So let me show the screen. Um, and we'll we'll get right into it um okay so here's what you don't want to do um this is a great message this is not selling a product this is selling an idea or a concept and the idea is um we want to help people who are being hurt that's a that's a clear cut message right we're not right. we're not selling a product we're selling an idea like hey we need this needs to change in our society or culture what you don't want to do is uh just say it out loud boldly because um people won't take the time to look at this like be honest if you were walking down a hallway and this was one of many things hanging on the wall would you ever even take the time to read it probably not probably you would not so what they did instead thankfully is they did this and um they made it subtle. I, I have a theory. Okay, hold on. Let me make it where you can see our screen again. I mean, see ourselves. Okay, so here's my theory. Our brains love it if there's like a, a connection that doesn't quite meet. And like you see this and you see this and our brains have to make the jump, the connection. Does that make sense? Right. Okay, so let me put it back on the uh, screen again. Um. Okay, so... It doesn't say overtly like, hey, this lady was um, punched by her husband. It doesn't say that. But the implication is, hey, even though this is what most of us see on the uh, outside, this is what's going on behind closed doors. And so the implication is that she has been, we can figure this out. She's been hurt by her husband, right? Or somebody. Someone, yeah, right. And so um, the the thing is, when we're trying to sell an idea um, to get people to change, to do things differently than they were before, um, we have to make it where um, it gets their attention so they'll even see what the message is. This is a great message, but nobody's going to take the time to see it. This might get someone's attention. That Maybe they can relate to it. They may be in the same situation. They may know somebody who is um, in the same situation. And then what you never, ever want to do is say a good message like, hey, we need to help these people and then not have an outlet for them to help immediately because we're, we're fickle people. We forget stuff. And so right off the bat, put a website, put a phone number, do something that they could do right now. Does that make sense? Yes. OK, so here's another one. Adopt a pet. I mean, that's fun. We've adopted multiple pets. Good ones, right? Yeah, a little, little crazy, but good. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's not wrong. So uh, here's the point. If you're walking down a, a crowded hallway, and again, just walk down the schools, uh, the hallways of Auburn High, there's so many posters. Likely, would this catch your attention? You're talking to people. You have a limited time frame. Are you likely to take the time to even stop and read this? No. Probably you will not. So um, this is not the actual poster. Thankfully, what they really did was this. And um, what I did not mention earlier is um, it's a thing to use one person and or one animal and get them to look you right in the eye. Like this lady um, is looking you right in the eye and uh, it's just like a direct gaze. And so it's almost like this, this particular dog is just asking you for help. If you were to see... Um, you know, from a distance, 2,000 dogs is, is more impersonal. Right. Right. And yeah. so um, 
Fido wants you. Yes, yes. And again, have an outlet. Like, don't just say adopt a dog or adopt this particular dog. Say like, here's how you can do it right now. Here's the website. Here's the phone number. This happens all the time. So like, uh, they figured this out many, many years ago. This is not the entire army asking for you. This is Uncle Sam. They personified the United States of America into one person and said, look, look, I need you. And uh, here's another one. You know, again, they figured this out a long time ago. Um, it's, it's one person looking you in the eye, not looking off in the distance. It's one person asking for help. And we're more likely to help that way. This one, um, they actually combined many, many people into one so that that one multifaceted person could look you in the eye and say, look, look, please donate blood. I need your help. Right. Does that make sense? And again, put a phone number, put a website, put both, um, because we'll forget. We just we're busy people, busy culture. And so um, I need your help and I, I need it now. Here's how you can do it right now. That's that's the way to get people's attention. Um, this is sort of a different angle, but uh, it's not a public service announcement. It's like, hey, your breath stinks and here's a product that can help it. But again, it's a direct gaze kind of thing. Like, hey, I need you to um, yeah. deal with this situ situation. Yeah, that's kind of like our eight-year-old told you this morning. That's uh, your you breath stunk. Didn't have to say it out loud. <laughs> so we're recording this. So you're the worst. So another way, other than the direct gaze, to um to sell more so a product than an idea or a concept is to uh have association so okay let me put it back on the uh screen again let's see here so that they can see us um hmm. oh here we go have i been muted this whole time no Okay, so let me ask you a question. If um, if a stranger came up to you and immediately, without even introducing themselves, said like, hey, do you want to buy these shoes? Would you probably do it? No. What if they're like 20 bucks? 20 bucks. You can have these shoes from a stranger. I'd start walking away faster. Yes, you probably would do that. We all would do that. The, um, when you sell things, is kind of about establishing trust. So if a if a close friend of yours came up and said, "Hey, look, will you buy these same shoes for twenty dollars?" Are you much more likely to buy those shoes? Yeah, if it's the right size. Well, sure. That's okay. That was implied. So, uh, if uh, if a celebrity that you knew of, let's say, uh, who's a famous person that you like? That I like. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So like a, yeah. from a show or something, like an actor. The actress in uh, Hamilton. I don't know her name. One of the Schuyler sisters. Okay, yeah, like that. right, right. So if she came up and you'd never met her, but you knew exactly who she was, right? The, mm -hmm. uh, that helped us. Eliza. Okay, yeah. so if she came up and she tried to sell you a pair of shoes for $20, would you likely? Purchase. Yeah, if she signed it. So, yes, probably you would. So, okay. We take a brand, an established thing, and we use that to sell a product. So, a brand just means basically a picture that represents an idea. So, like a, a green light is kind of like a brand. You see a green light, it is literally just a green light, right? But what does it represent? Go. It means you can hit the gas and you can move the car forward now. Yes. So like if you see a, um, if you see a, uh, trying to think of a, another one in your car, if you see a little light that says, um, that has a picture of a gas tank, what, what does that little image represent? You're running out of gas. You're low on gas and you need to go purchase some gas. Yes. So, um, in, in graphic design, we create brands all the time. And sometimes those brands um, become associated with celebrities. And so here, let me get it back on the uh, screen real quick. Where are you going? I thought it was on the screen. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Let me see. You want my coffee? I need to... <laughs> so we're almost done. So uh, 
Okay, here we go. So LeBron James has just become associated with, well, with Nike shoes um, and with athleticism and with being super, super good at basketball and things like that. And so uh, if you take a celebrity, um, that will help to kind of establish the trust that we were talking about to sell a product. So, hey, if a stranger's wearing these shoes, I just don't care. I don't know that guy. If LeBron James is wearing these shoes, immediately there is some um, draw in my mind toward those shoes. Like I, I've never met him personally, but I know he's very, very, very good at what he does. And I've seen him talk and he seems like a likable uh, guy and uh, smart guy. And um, his his brand is not a bad one, right? And so very, very simple stuff. It doesn't even mention shoes on here. It just uh, has a Nike logo, has LeBron James, witness history. They don't have to mention shoes. You see this kind of thing and the brand's already established. We associate him with Nike shoes and with athleticism and with um, just being a likable guy in general. And uh, it just kind of makes trust in our brains. And that is more likely to make us purchase shoes than just having a poster that says, please buy our shoes. So what are you? My wife is doing hand motions toward me. No, no, that did not happen. Wow. She, <laughs> I, Stop. Uh, so Stop. Uh, if you're doing one for, um, for Auburn University or for the city of Auburn, Bo Jackson has, we kind of, in our, you know, subculture we trust bo jackson we like bo jackson and so that's one way to sell shoes or this is a former auburn high school teacher you know if i'm walking down the hallway and i see a bunch of posters with a bunch of celebrities i may not turn my head you know we we do see celebrities pretty often if i see one that has mr bagwell on it i will look at it 10 times out of 10. if i see a giant poster with harrison williams's face on it um i'm gonna stop and read that poster that's gonna happen at least you have my attention um, because in our small culture, um, Mr. Bagwell is a local celebrity. You know, if I, if I'm walking down the hallway and I see a poster with, um, let's see here, coach Simo's face on it, I'm going to stop and read what it has to say. And so anyway, just establish trust. Then say what you want to ask what you want because you've established trust. Okay. One more for today. And that'll be, uh, probably enough. You can compare one thing to another. So um, it says living in harmony, um, and it's, uh, of course, human fingers representing a piano. We're, we're um, comparing uh, humanity to music, to a piano. And uh, they have a, um, a website you can go to, humanpiano.org, about um, just justice and equality and things like that. And so here's another one, comparison. Uh, this guy was only going nine kilometers per hour. What does that convert to? How many miles per oh, hour? I, slow. So like six miles per hour, maybe? Let's say that. So he fell down at six miles per hour. Um, drive carefully. Uh, the implication is we're comparing this to a car. Like if he hurt himself this bad going six miles an hour, how badly would he have hurt himself if he was in the car? And that's why you should drive carefully, right? We're comparing this um, cupcake to a diamond ring, like I don't even know what that says. I I don't I don't read the language, but I get their point. Is like this is luxury food right here. This is food that uh, is for um, special occasions, things like that. And so here's one. Um, again, I can't read the language, but I get the point. This chocolate, this is some, some fine chocolate. What's the word for um, not luxury? Like a a blank cookie, like a um gourmet gourmet yeah this is gourmet food that's it and so compare um this back seat to so much fun like it says at the bottom very small getting there is just as fun uh and uh hey look we're we're having a great time just being in the car together it's as fun as being on a beach um this is one time you can get away i think with not telling the 100 percent truth on um a product because it's so over the top that we all know that you're not trying to tell the truth. It's hyperbole, right? You never, ever want to lie in a product. You don't want to tell them, honestly, this will really make you see just as good as an owl. But that's not their point. They're just saying uh, these glasses will make you see better. And it's a funny over the top hyperbole for um, 
uh, an advertisement. If they, if you put out a poster, it says uh, best coffee in the entire world, like Elf, we know that it's not really the best coffee in the world. They're just hyperbole. You're just saying it's good coffee. It's kind of creepy. So <laughs> that's not the point. point. Nightmare. All right. Well, so, hey, hunting season begins. We're going hunting. And it's a hanger. We're going hunting for bargains, that kind of thing. We're comparing one thing to another. Here's another public service announcement. Um, the longer you wait, it says very small, the longer you wait, the deadlier abuse gets. Um, they're comparing a fist to a time bomb, right? And so it just helps us to get the message. It helps our brains to associate. Uh, it says when you smoke at home, your home smokes back. The couch looks like a cigarette. And so like, hey, man, this couch, this couch has some sense to it now, things like that. So we're comparing one thing to another. Um, that's probably enough for today. So uh, let me get us back on the, the screen. So today's is more so the psychological aspect, not a Photoshop technique, but um, how do we, A, get people to stop and read what we have to say, and then B, how do we have any power to turn them to our way of thinking? Like, hey, you know, you have those shoes? Instead, why don't you get these shoes? Hey, you know how you're sitting around while that person's getting hurt? Why don't you turn around and help this person right now, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, how do we get enough of a grip into their brain to help tweak it to to a different direction? So, okay, listen, if you have any questions, please holler. Um, let me know if I can help out at all. rccox at auburnschools.org, and I'll talk to you later.